What is up guys, my name is Athlon and today I have for you a new tutorial. This tutorial is on how you can create this logo here. And as you can see, this logo resembles something you'd find on an iOS 7 machine. The difference between this and something you'd find on iOS 6 or below being that you don't have the glossy effects on top. Now obviously if you wanted to, you can also implement this as your Android icon logo as well. So um, also in terms of the tools you need, you don't need any extra brushes, plugins, or scripts. And in terms of the difficulty, uh, it's not really difficult, it's extremely simple, and anyone who just got Photoshop can easily follow this. And um, yeah, that's all there is. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial itself. So to start off the tutorial, let's start by creating a new canvas. So go to File, click New, and in this dialog box, you want to change the width and the height to 1024, and you don't want to fiddle around with these options too much and click OK. So here you go, you've been given a new canvas. Now the first step is to create the shape that you need to work on. So to do that, on the left hand side of the toolbar, um, the left hand side toolbar of the screen, you have this button here. Now if you click and hold, you'll be given a bunch of options and from here you want to choose the rounded rectangle tool. So once you've chosen that, just click on the canvas and you'll be given this dialog box. And on here you want to change the width and the height to match the exact same height and width of the canvas. So that's 1024 by 1024. And the radii needs to be 220 all around and it needs to be created from the center to give you that nice rounded finish. So once you've um, set the options as such, click OK and you'll be given this rounded rectangle. You want to align the rounded rectangle to the edges of the canvas. I mean, if you move around it a little bit, you'll find that it automatically locks on to the edges of the canvas. So once you've done that, that next bit is going to be putting a gradient on top of this rectangle. And um, that's if you really want to. I mean, I know people who would rather prefer to have um, a single colored icon, but um, there's, there's no fun in that. So um, why not put a gradient on top? So to do that, in this bottom bar here, um, you see this kind of half shaded circle, click on that and I'll give you an option to create an adjustment layer and from the options choose gradients. So once you've been given this dialog box you want to click on this um, bar here and you want to choose a preset of two colors, um, I'll, I'll usually go for those and you can obviously change the colors to your liking. So I'll choose something which is fairly um, dark and fairly beautiful to look at I guess. Um, so choose two colors. Um, you might prefer to choose two which are fairly close to each other on the spectrum, let's say, just because it would, it would reduce the banding on the gradients. Now if you don't know what I mean by banding, it's, it's these lines you can see here. If you're watching it in 720p, you just might be able to see it. It's, it's these, these little steps of colors going up to the different color. You want to try and avoid that just so that it give you a much smoother finish um, in the end. So you want to choose two colors to suppress that and also dithering also suppresses the banding. So as you can see the, the banding has gone down quite a bit. Um, dithering suppresses it. I'm not saying it prevents it. It, it definitely doesn't prevent it and um, most of the time it, it suppresses it quite a bit. So you have this nice gradient and the next bit is to put this gradient on top of the rectangle. And it's really simple, click on the gradient that you just created and click create clipping mask. And once you've done that, you can see that the gradient now covers the entirety of the rounded rectangle. And so once you've done that, the next bit is going to be adding a bit of shading around the edges. That's, that's really simple as well. Go to the rounded rectangle, right click, go to blending options. And on here, you want to go to inner shadow. And um, you want to get the settings to that it, it, it looks fairly 3D-ish and to do that click the size and you want to have it fairly reasonably high um, just so that it gives you this kind of overshadowing effect here. Choke, you don't want it to be too high up um, around on just under three quarters or a fifth of the way will do. Distance, you want to set it to zero just so that it covers the edges and doesn't kind of wander off um, elsewhere. Opacity, to leave it as it is and we've got this the simplest design, the probably the best better shading that we can get not the best definitely the one of the better kind of shading you can get and the next bit is going to be putting the actual icons on there as well so I'm not gonna lie I cheated on this bit um, this icon 
as you can see here, um, I did not create it, although it is easily creatable using the pencil. And if you guys really want that, um, I don't mind if you can uh, send me, I mean, I don't mind creating a tutorial for the pencil and teaching you guys how to create these simple icons. And um, yeah, so that, if that's something you're interested in, please do hit me up with a direct message or something. And I, I wouldn't mind doing that. Um, so the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using something from the custom shape tool and you'll be given a bunch of options and let's start off by putting the pin on this icon here so once you've chosen custom shapes tool from the same place you chose rounded rectangle tool you'll be given this menu here and from here you can choose a shape that you want to put in and um, photoshop gives you a lot of categories to choose from and you can choose anything you want um, i've chosen to go with the, the pin because the pin is it resembles something which has uh, some sort of purpose and I recommend when doing this to hold shift so that it gives you a nice proportion and like it gives the same proportionality as that so it gives it doesn't give you any distorted um, image or as such and it gives you something uh, which which you know it, it resembles the actual actual object and you want to change the color to white just so that it fits in with the rest of the icons and just stands out um, far better than gray so once you've done that, you've been given the icon, and the next bit is just putting the circle around the pin itself. And to do that, just go to your Ellipse tool, and you need to hold Shift for this process as well. So hold Shift, create a nice round circle, and as you can see, it has created a nice round circle. And you want to leave the inner color of the circle blank. So to do that, uh, Hold on, I've, I've screwed up here. I'm going to go back. You want to create a new layer when you do it, sorry. And just do the same thing. Um, click shift, drag it around. Make sure you click that. Drag it around. A nice large circle. And you want to just kind of cover the pin as well. I'm going to roughly align it so that it's equal distance from all the four sides. You want the inner color to be nil, nothing. And you want the stroke or the outer edges of the circle to be white and you also want the thickness of this circle to be slightly larger than that um, something of that size would do and as you can see we're pretty much done with the tutorial we have been given uh, an icon logo which, some, which should, looks like something you'd find on a uh, new Android or iPhone smartphone um, anyways guys I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you got what you came for I'm sorry if I slightly cheated and used, it, used the custom shapes tool um, I really wanted to use the, do the actual tutorial with um, the pencil but I, I, it would just take too much to, too long to actually do it um, yeah I hope you enjoyed it guys if you have clicked the like button and I'd also appreciate it if you click the subscribe button as well it, it would help you get notified um, in case if, if someone sends me a direct message um, for the pencil I know this doesn't look as perfected as that but um, it doesn't look too bad Oh well, so hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video and um, yeah, cheers.